Well, good morning. My name is Abby Spaulding, and I am a second grade teacher at Freestrom Elementary in Lincoln Public Schools. It's good to see some of you who have returned from other conferences. I see some familiar faces and a lot of new student teachers that are just getting started, so that's exciting to see all of you as well. Well, I had, I, I just need to tell you, this was quite a, quite a crazy evening for me last night. I was working on uh, Prezi that I was going to present today, and uh, I couldn't find it. I spent two hours on it, and at midnight, it was gone. So I thought, well, okay, I've got to have something. So I got back on and did another two hours and uh, lost it again. So this morning, I woke up, and I was just like, ah, what am I going to do? And um, eventually, I found it, and so we have a presentation. So I just wanted to um, introduce myself, talk about iPads in the classroom. I came to a tech edge about, well, I think it was two or three years ago, and um, I was really excited. I knew I wanted to start technology in my classroom and um, become a little bit more in the new age with the kids that have these, these uh, devices. So my first um, Tech Edge, they had iPads for us to be able to practice. And I didn't even know how to turn it on. So I felt really stupid. I'm like looking at people going, how do you how do, you do this? And so um, that's kind of where it came from. I didn't know a lot about the iPad or iPods. And, um, but I knew I wanted to use them. So that was where I started my journey. And um, I have now presented at, I think, four tech edges, and four or five, I believe. And uh, I've come a long way. And like, like what uh, our keynote speaker said, uh, it's really a paradigm shift and where you're coming from and where you want to be and just being open to trying new things. So I'm going to go ahead and start. <coughs> This is called a Prezi. If you ever want to present um, information and not just use a plain old PowerPoint, this is kind of a fun way to do it. And um, so, go ahead. before they play, a lot of my um, a lot of my slides kind of go along with what you just heard. So it was kind of neat to hear him because it plays hand in hand with some of the things that he talked about. Digital citizenship is a really important thing to go over when you're just starting out. And um, I know in LPS, they have actually come up with this little poster for digital citizenship and talking about how to introduce this into your classroom and how to use it appropriately. So that's really an important place to start. Um, go over the rules, turning, turning the iPad on and off, uh, when to use the iPad, where they use it, cleaning it, charging it. Um, I made a little set of rules, and actually the first day of school I introduced it. I said, um, you're in a class where we're going to use iPads. They were really excited. And um, I guess I'm starting to get kind of a reputation because a lot of the kids are saying, well, Mrs. Spalding uses iPads. So they're getting kind of excited to uh, come into my room and use them. And so I started off right away explaining the rules and how to use the iPad, charging it, plugging it in, using the headphones with it. Um, don't assume that all kids know how to use an iPad. You, you may find out that there are a few that don't. Um, the majority of the kids in my class do, but there are a few that uh, did not know how to turn it on or how to use it. So just be prepared for that, that uh, even though we all think that everybody knows how to use them now, they don't. So here's a little blow up of the poster, if you wanted to see it closer. Um, protect private information, talk about that. What is private information? Like he was saying, kids are putting stuff out all the time and they don't even realize they're kind of taking risks. And so we need to teach the kids that it is a risk when you're putting private information out, um, your phone number, your address. You don't want people lurking and trying to find the kids um, you know, in one way or another. So we talk about how to keep that private and not putting all your information out there. Um, respect yourselves and others. Um, stay safe online. A again, it goes in with not sharing information that you don't want others to find. Um, balance the time, and this is really important. I started finding out, I was on this mission of learning how to use the iPad, and my husband's like, am I ever gonna see you again? <laughs> because like, all you do is the iPad. And um, you know, you have to really watch how you balance your time. And kids are like this too, we know that. They'll get on and they'll game, and 
and kind of get involved in it and lose track of time. So you really need to set limits on how much time they use their iPad or their digital devices in class. Um, stand up to cyberbullying. I think this is really good because they are seeing this more and more at younger ages. It's not just middle school or high school or college. Um, this is happening with the younger kids. So really watching that cyberbullying and explaining what that is. So this is, um, this is how I start off. Before they play, I explain this. All right, getting started. <clears throat> Begin by planning how you will use your iPad in your class. Um, kind of think about what do you want to accomplish? What do you want the kids to use it for? Um, during what subject? I recommend starting out really small. Looking at one subject of the day that you think would be easiest to integrate an iPad. Um, I started out using it during writer's workshop because I thought that'd be a great time to bring kids over create an ebook, have the kids using the um, ebook magic app. And so that's kind of where I started, really simple and in one subject area. Then I decided to kind of start branching out and I started feeling a little bit more comfortable using it, projecting it. And so I started looking at using it in reading, guided reading groups, during station time. I use it now every day in stations, which my kids are probably a little upset because I took all my iPads home this weekend to charge them. and. Um, thought, well, if anybody needs them at a session, I could, I could let them borrow. So they're probably looking for them today going, where do they go? Um, but it is really a part of our day, and the kids, uh, they just expect that they're going to be there and, and use them. So um, just really think about how you're going to plan for them, uh, when, they're, when they're going to use it, how long, uh, for what kind of instruction. Is it small group? Is it individual? Is it a large group situation? So, and when you will teach this, you can't just hand them and say, hey, here you go, go, go play during station time. You have to actually set them down and teach the app that you want them to use, teach the skill. And what I found out is using um, the apps and actually projecting them, if I'm introducing an app, I'll, I'll just project it for the whole class. And I'll explain, okay, this is the ebook magic app. This is how we're gonna use it. So um, doing that, you kind of cover the whole class and you get that, that information out that they need and kind of going over some of the ins and outs of the apps. So that's really important. <clears throat> How to get an iPad? Well, like I was saying a couple years ago when I went to my first Tech Edge, I was sitting there going, well, I don't have one. This is all cool, but I don't have an iPad. Um, what am I going to do? And there were some people around me that said the same thing. They're like, wow, this is really cool, but we don't have them and our schools don't provide them. Um, LPS is trying to get on board and start uh, getting more technology. That's, that's another part of what they're working on right now. And some schools already have it. I know Aurora, COZAD, there's some school districts that are going one-to-one. -one. And so I would love for, for our school districts to be able to do that. But we know that that's not, <laughs> that's not going to happen for everybody right away. So um, since you're asking that question, how can I get one? Um, what you need to do, check with your PTO or your PTA, um, with your school district. There are, there, there are some schools that their PTOs are looking for things to spend their money on, and they want to buy things for the teachers to use. So that might be an option. If it is not, <coughs> use your school stipend if you have one. Um, I know LPS has a 225 stipend, so that, that may not cover everything, but it's a good start. Um, I bought my own. My very first was was paid with my own money, and I wrote it off for tax tax credit. So um, you can do that too, and um, write a grant. I actually wrote four grants and landed two of them through LPS Foundation. So I did receive iPads writing a grant, and um, actually it's funny. Those grants took me 15 minutes, and I landed those, and I had some that took me two or three weeks, and I did not hear back any anything from them. So um, that's a really good place to start is to look at grants. Donors.org is also another great place if you're looking for writing a grant um, for the technology in your classroom. People are actually looking for classrooms to do this because they know that this is up and coming. This is a great, uh, great tool for kids. So they're looking at wanting to supply these for people. Um, what do you need? 
when you're starting out, you're going to think, okay, what's all the, what, you know, what's all the ins and outs of starting with an iPad? Um, I had quite a journey trying to figure out, okay, I got a, a fourth generation, and how do I connect this to my projector at school? Because I had a one iPad classroom for a while and did not have enough to be able to have all the kids doing it at once, so I wanted to project. And so what you need to look at is the back of your projector and find out what ports it has. I found out that the HDMI plug port is like the best way to go, so I got a cord, I got my lightning connector, and um, I was up and going. So you'll want to see what kind of projector you have, um, the capabilities of it, and uh, will it work with the iPad. Most new projectors will, so that's a, a good thing. Um, but you'll want to check on that. I know in our school, uh, in LPS, they are now making sure that every class has a projector. So at our school, we, we do have those now. And hopefully, that, that's kind of ongoing throughout the districts now so that you can project. Um, so after you get your cord, you get your dongle. Um, if you don't know how to set it up, check with your tech person. We have a lot of teachers that are like, oh my gosh, this is like way over my head too techy, I don't know what to do. And so I said, you know what, we've got great, we've got great technology people, um, check in with them. You can Google it and find out how to do it. So there's lots of resources out there that you can find out how to project your iPad. What to do next after you get your iPad? Um, get an iTunes account. I had my student teacher um, actually say, okay, now that you have an iPad, Abby, you need to get an iTunes account. I'm like, whoa, does this cost money? Like, what all do I have to do? You know, is my husband going to kill me if I do this? You know, and he's like, no, it's free. It's, it's easy, very easy. So I got my iTunes account, and originally I thought, well, I'm not doing this for music. Like, I want to do other stuff. And he's like, oh, just let me, you know, exploit this. So I got on it, I got my iTunes account, and that's basically how you can get your apps. So you'll go through your app store and you can purchase um, apps or you can get um, free or light. If it says light, that means that it's free. I know all your student teachers, you probably all know this already. So, um, but for anybody who doesn't or doesn't really know the whole app language, um, that's what you'd want to look for if you want free ones or normally they're called light. And then the ones that cost normally are like high density and they take up a little bit more space on your iPad, so kind of watch that. Um, also, I found out, like, I'd be looking up apps and I couldn't find them, and I realized, oh, I need to make sure that I check for if it's an iPhone app or an iPad app, and you really need to make sure you do that. Do it for both settings if you're trying to look for one. If you don't find it in the iPad apps, it's probably in the iPhone apps because somebody has told you, oh, look this one up. This is really cool. Um, an example, I, I got a pitch app that Guy Trainin was explaining. And I'm like, gosh, guy, I can't find this. Am I spelling it wrong? What's going on? And he said, oh, it's in the iPhone apps. And I was like, ah, well, no wonder. There it is. So double check and make sure that you look in both categories when you're looking for your apps. Also, you want to look at the ratings. Um, I check, especially for the ones I'm going to use with the kids, I look at the ratings and make sure, well, is, is, it, a, is it a good app? Is it, is it useful? What am I going to get out of it? Um, you know, so check the ratings, check up what people have said about it, how they've integrated it, um, they've used it in their classroom, and look at the options of the app. You can actually practice or kind of look through and slide through all the options that they have in that app before you download. Another cool thing, if you get an app and you want to um, delete it, you can, and it'll be in your history, and you can always pull it up later. I just realized, oh, you know, I've got, I'm starting to get like, a, so many apps that I need to start cleaning things up and really looking at what I need because I'm starting to get full, even on a 64 gig iPad, <laughs> which is really scary. So um, if you have to do that, and there's some that you don't use regularly, take those off, and then you can always pull them up later. Students versus teacher apps. Um, student apps can be open or assigned. Assigned are for skill building, targeted practice, and data can be collected on these. So there are several apps that work that way. Um, open apps are like gaming apps, and they will reset every time the kid gets in. So it's not always collecting or keeping a, a cumulative uh, information on a certain student. 
so um, those are kind of two different kinds of apps um, that you could look at. Teacher apps can be used to project, or if you want to use them for classroom management or clerical, um, those are the kind of apps that you might want to look at as well for, for teacher apps. Finding good apps. You could spend hours, and I have. I have spent literally hours and hours and hours my co-teachers are like, do you sleep or do you do anything else? Like, I am connected. They know every time they see me, I've got it in my, I've got my iPad in my hand. And it's kind of a funny ongoing joke now. Um, but it's finding good apps. A great resource is smartappsforkids.com. I just found, just kind of stumbled upon this. A teacher at our school recommended it. And the really cool thing about this is it'll send you daily alerts as to what is free that day and what are the best apps out that are free that day and so if you it, it'll send you you just need to get on to um, that website and sign in it's free and they will send you alerts every day and i'll tell you this is probably my favorite email to open up every day you get a lot of spam and you get a lot of stuff that you don't want to look at this is one that i it's like christmas time every time i open it up to see what is out there. They have regular education apps and special education apps on this. So there'll be apps just for your resource kids too, which is really cool. So I would highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, ask other te teachers what they're using. Google best student apps. I, I started Googling, okay, I need to find some lists. Um, they, I mean, there's so many lists. The best math, the best reading apps. So those are some good areas to look at um, when you're looking for apps. Attend conferences. Tech Edge, this is a perfect place. You can share like with all these people that love technology or want to learn more. There might be an app that's thrown out there. I went to NIDA last year and I actually had the best conversation. I learned more from the lady I was sitting next to and she said the same thing about me. She's like, I'm so glad I came to you. <laughs> She's like, because I learned so much. So sharing with other teachers is a really good idea um, to, to get those ideas of what kind of apps you want to use and what's out there. So the NIDA, the Tech Edge, um, I went, I've actually went to the ASCD conference um, in Chicago last year, and I'm going in LA, and that's like, that's like the best end all of conferences for teachers, and I found out a lot of really great ideas there too. So if, there, if you have an opportunity to attend any kind of conferences or courses, if you're an LPS or you're planning on being an LPS, they have a lot of great technology courses to sign up for as well for different credits. So um, there's a lot of quality apps out there, but you need to really look at what you've got because some don't do what you want them to. Uh, make an app guide. I actually got on to Teachers, uh, Teachers Pay Teachers, and that's another great site. I would highly recommend. It's very addictive. And they have great ideas. It's uh, kind of like a shopping center for teachers. And I found this packet, it was um, iPad 101, and literally I had to buy it. I've never bought anything off of there, and I had to buy this. And it was, it was a great packet of information on how to use, um, how to set up your classroom, and how to organize it. So um, make an app guide. All you need to do is take a screenshot of your apps, um, print it out, place it in a page protector, use a little wipe, uh, little wipe off marker, and circle the apps you want them to do that day, or for that station, or for that week. Maybe you're saying, okay, we're gonna practice doing Spelling City this week, and circle that one so they know, and they have it there, and they know what the icon looks like, and um, they can go to it right away. So this is kind of a good management tool to have in your classroom. Locking apps. I just started learning about this a couple years ago because I was like, well, what if the kids get on? I mean, originally I brought my own iPad in there and I have, you know, pictures and I have all kinds of stuff in there um, that I've taken over the, the couple years that I've had it. And teachers were like, you need to be locking your apps because they're going to be getting in and like pulling up other apps and wasting time and doing other things that you may not want them to be doing during station time. So there is, uh, you can lock the apps, and how you do that is, um, it also eliminates them getting onto apps, but also um, not clicking onto ads, because they can, if, if you have a light or a free app, you can like get ads and then they can click on and like pull stuff up that 
doesn't even have anything to do with the app. So um, this is another way to lock that out. Uh, go to settings, and then you go into general accessibility, and then select guided access, slide on, set your password, and go to app, click home, circle three times. And if you don't, if you didn't get all that, you can Google that and it'll tell you how to lock your apps. So that would be an important thing to do if you have students using, say, your own personal iPad or some that have very numerous apps. QR codes are kind of the buzz. Um, there is actually some new updated stuff even after QR codes, but a lot of teachers are using these. Um, they're kind of like a jump code, and jump codes, uh, I know on the LPS, uh, the new web page, they have little color-coded blocks and the kids can type in and it'll take you right to a site. Um, that's really good for lower elementary kids because they get lost in the shuffle. They don't even have to know how to type in the little bar, the <laughs> search bar. So um, QR codes and jump codes are really good to have to get them right where you want them or to a site or maybe you have a YouTube video you want them to go right to. This is a great way to do it. And um, you can also Google how to use QR codes, how to create them, and use them in your classroom. So I highly recommend looking into this um, because it does save you time and it gets your kids right where you want them to. You could even print off the page and put it in a page protector and then just make sure your iPad has a scanner. A free, there's a lot of free apps that are scanning devices. Um, have them just scan it at the station and there it is right there. You can have worksheets on there, you can have stories, you can have videos, whatever you're trying to teach them right on those QR codes. That's a great, great, efficient um, way to use their time. Ways to use your iPad. These, this is kind of a journey of mine. These are things that I have done with the iPad. Um, I've done videos, I've done pictures, I use pictures for everything. Um, recording, assessments, direct instruction, practicing skills. FaceTime and Skyping, I've done collaborative, um, collaborative international collaboration with Guam. They uh, are our sister's school for, we have earned the Whole Child Network grant at Preachstrom, and so we are actually, um, Guam is another of the schools that received that grant. And so I thought, well, hey, we can do a couple things that would be pretty cool um, to Skype with Guam or email them. We've done Flat Stanley with them. And I started thinking, well, I need to go digital with this. Why am I just doing snail mail when we can do some other cool things? So you can, you can like, he, like our, our last um, speaker was talking about, you can, you can interact with people all over the world, which is really pretty cool. If there's a class that wants to interact with you, they're out there and they'll want to you know, talk with you or have the kids teach the other kids something. So there's a lot of ways that you can collaborate um, through FaceTime or Skyping. I have both, and I, I kind of like FaceTime a little bit better, but Skyping is great too. And um, so those are great options. Creating social stories and eBooks. I also had my kids do this. This was like a venture that I started out with with the Writers Workshop. And those little books, they each made their own book with eBook Magic, which they like loved that. That was like the best thing they did all year and they got to keep it, and it was basically a published story. And I could, after we were done creating the book, we, I could actually email it to the parents, and then the parents got to see their whole book that they published, and they thought that was really super cool. So um, the iPad is a great way to interact with parents. I have found that um, parents love it. They, they either have a smartphone, or they have an iPad, or they have a computer. They have some kind of technology, and when I send them something instantly that their kid did, they're like, this is the coolest thing I've ever gotten from a teacher. Thank you so much for keeping me posted and letting me kind of take a little step into what you're doing in your class. So um, another great tool to use, um, you know, and do that. Field trips, I've actually taken pictures of field trips and I've made a pitch, which is kind of like a quick little slideshow. Um, and then I send that out to parents so they got to see. I uh, did a little like yearbook thing at the end of the year with pictures, and they loved that too. Um, I also use it, we use it at stations every day, so the kids um, use that for independent reading. They pull up tumble books, which is like an, e uh, they take, it's like a big huge library of ebooks. If you get on Lincoln City Libraries, the tumble books is on there for free. 
Um, the OverDrive app, if you need to get, that's the Lincoln City Library app. You can pull up any book. If you don't have it in your classroom, you can go to Lincoln City Libraries and pull up a book, check it out, and have your kid have your kids read a library book you don't have in your classroom. Or if your li if your media specialist can't get it, that's another great way. What's the, what's the library? It's called OverDrive. Mm -hmm. I would use the website. Yeah, and that takes you right right to um, the site. I actually had to do that for um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid because that's like the hot series in my class and they like literally hide it from each other. They'll hide it behind a tote of books so that nobody else finds that book. And so I'm like, geez, this is like a hot commodity here. So I realized, well, I could, um, I could borrow the, the, those books from the library and then they could just get on and read them on the iPad. They thought that was pretty cool. Um, so that's another great way to use your iPads. Cooperative learning, we do a lot of um, Kagan cooperative learning and that's kind of, um, there's a lot of schools starting to pick that up or some that have been doing it forever. And I use uh, timers, spinners to pick kids. So those are really good apps. They're called Kagan Spinner and Kagan Timer. And you can actually, he was talking about a timer earlier. You can actually just put a timer up there and it clicks down and it has cool sounds. The spinner, they love that. They have a shoulder partner. It'll spin and then A partner gets to go or B partner and they're like cheering. Ah! <laughs> super excited. So um, I use that all the time for management. Emails, notes, taking, I don't, I don't typically write on paper anymore because I use my notes on my app that came with my iPad. I use that for everything when I take it. So I don't take a notebook, I just take my um, iPad when I go to conferences and things. Mobility projection, this is kind of a cool thing um, and I've been starting to do this. Project, I wanted to project my iPad through my computer so I wouldn't have to be hooked to a dongle and I could walk around. And I thought this was kind of like high tech. I'm like, wow, that's like futuristic. I can walk around and like, I have the power over here and over here. And so projecting the iPad, there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, you can go on Air Server. Dosery is my favorite. That's the one I'm using right now. Reflector, if you're in LPS, they actually have that on the new computers that are um, that we, we just received it, uh, just a few months ago. And so um, Reflector is another app. Some of the apps you're, you need to really take a look at, do the tr free trials, see if there's any bugs in them or if maybe it just doesn't work for you um, because there, there are some um, kind of loopholes on a couple of them. But um, I found Dosery has been my favorite and there's a lot of cool things you can do on that. I can actually even put notes and highlight on there and do all kinds of cool stuff with that. So um, basically that reads through your computer. So you have to have your computer on and then you can, you can uh, read whatever's on your computer. Um, if you're in LPS, you know we have the new reading series and everything's tech now and um, with, the, with the Wonder series. And so um, that has been a really important thing that I've been doing now because I'm using that technology every day. Um, it's funny that he was bringing up when Google was down. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I lost wonders. I couldn't get on. And I told the kids, I said, well, we're going the old fashioned way today. And they were like, what do you mean? Like, we're not doing it. You're not projecting it. And I said, no. Nope. When I went up to the, the board and they're like, oh, this is, this is totally old school. They were, it was funny. And I said, you know, we still can do this. We can still do this without our computers. So I'm um, reminding the kids that, you know, you can still learn without the computers, but it is definitely a nice tool to have. So that's a way to um, project your iPad through your computer. Here are some good apps to try. This was like my favorite thing at NIDA was I like got together with teachers and we just like had this app share. I felt so nerdy, but it was like so cool, like my favorite thing. And um, EduCreations, I'd have to say, is my top number one. I use it every day in almost every single subject. I've used it in integrated studies, in math, in reading. Um, I, I pulled up, when we were doing the butterfly unit, I pulled up a, a picture of a, a chrysalis for the painted lady butterfly. And I put it into EduCreations. And then I actually could um, do a lesson and you can draw on it. It's basically like having a big whiteboard in your room without paying thousands of dollars for a big whiteboard in your room. 
and it's free, so I highly recommend doing edu creations. Um, and you can email a lesson to your parents. If there is like a math lesson the kids are not getting, they, they're having a really a hard time with it, you can record yourself and send it to the parents and they can hear it that night and go over with their kids. So it is like the ultimate, my favorite. Show Me is another kind of whiteboard um, app. I haven't used it as much, but it kind of does some of the same things. Kids Doodle is one of my kids' favorite. It's down in the bottom left. And they use that. It's kind of like, um, it's like a coloring kind of writing. So they use it for handwriting, for spelling practice. They use it to, to practice cursive. I'm going to use it for that because we're teaching cursive coming up. Um, heat pads, another one I just found that's really cool for writing and, and creating. Um, the Language Arts Quiz Game Show is kind of like Jeopardy and without having to do all the work of doing Jeopardy and setting it all up. Um, it comes with all the different areas of language arts that you're teaching and um, that's a fun one. My kids really like that. Uh, the C. Collins Big Cat series, I found out that series from Lori Frederick. They were free when we talked and I got them all downloaded and they're basically like ebooks but the kids can go in and create what they want the characters to do. It records and then it also can play the story to them. So they can practice their fluency, they can create a story. Um, those are really good ones. Ebook Magic was one of my first ones that I really started to use in Writer's Workshop. You can create your own stories for the students or with the students. Um, and Storia, oh, Pitch. Pitch is one I found out from Guy Trainin at a conference, I think the last one we had. And that I've used actually for my, um, for lots of things, for field trips, for um, little slideshows with pictures of my sons doing softball or baseball. And um, so Pitch is a fun little app. It puts music into the video and it takes just like a couple minutes. It's really cool. It does all these cool different um, ins and outs and things. So I, I would recommend using that if you like to do little slideshows. Storia is another, like an ebook location. You can pull up books, you can download them, you can purchase them, and then have them in your library forever. So um, that's a good way. Overdrive, I already talked about that. Lincoln City Library app, get that, get that if you like to pull up library books and, and have the kids reading those. Um, spelling City is a good spelling one. Science 360 is probably the top science one. Class Dojo, I'm using that as a behavior management. It gives um, each of the kids a little character. And then as you're walking through the room and you're seeing things they're doing, um, you just mark it. So it gets, they get a plus or a minus. And then at the end of the day, they get to see their little character and it's like really em empowering. <laughs> the kids are like, uh, can I check my monster today? Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's not so good. I need to be working on that. It's also a connection you can make with parents. There's now a parent um, part in that app that you can email that to them to let them know how they're doing. Comic Touch and Comic Life are really good uh, for writer's workshop for boys who may not like to write a lot. You can put it into a comic bubble and have take a picture of them and make their own little comics. And I actually have a, a social story I did with that app, so that's a really good one. RR Calc is like the best thing if you do running records. Um, I shared this with a professor on a tour bus at the ASDD conference and he said that was the best thing he learned the whole conference. He was so glad he sat next to me and he said he was going to be calling back to his um, other professors at his college and, and having them teach the teachers this app. Um, RR Calc is it, it's basically like a running record calculator that you don't have to do anything. You basically record the kids, you put in the number of words, it calculates their errors, their self-correct, everything. It is like the most amazing thing ever. And then the really cool part, and you only have to upgrade, and this one's actually a cheap app. It was $1.99, it might be a little bit more now, but when I bought it, it was $1.99, and it was the best $1.99 I ever spent, because then I could forward that recording of the kid and all their information of their assessment directly to parents two seconds after they read to me. And the parents were like, this is so cool. And the other neat thing is you can do it quarterly. So like if I wanted to, um, I, I record every quarter that I assess with my, my DRAs and my running records, and then I send that off to, to the parents so they can hear how they've improved throughout the year. 
So it's a really um, empowering uh, app, and I would highly recommend looking into that one. They have upgraded too, so now they have one that it calculates and keeps everything, all your information um, for that student cumulatively. So look into that. Um, thank you for coming. We have a few minutes uh, if you have questions. I hope you learned a lot about using the iPad in the classroom. If you have any questions, you can email me at baseball at lps.org, or you can find me on Edmodo. And I don't know, how many of you are, do Edmodo in here? Anybody? Okay. Edmodo is kind of like a Facebook site for teachers. And it's, it's kind of a new, new thing. Um, but the cool thing is, I was doing Edmodo, and I found out through the head tech guy through LPS that he said there's like 400 to 500 teachers using Edmodo and they just, they just realized that. And so now they're giving classes on Edmodo and now the principals are taking classes on Edmodo, I know through LPS. So it's the new upcoming great place to go to, if you have a question about your class or what's going on, you can go on Edmodo and um, LPS actually has a teacher site, but you can get your own and um, your own site, I guess, or on the site, you can get your your own, uh, what do you call it, put your name in, and basically people can find you all over the world, and when I went to an ASCD conference in Chicago, there were teachers from all countries using Edmodo, so it's not just local, it's worldwide.